Hello wonderful person, this is Anton and in today's video I wanted to talk about this beautiful object you see in front of you called Titan. This is one of the coolest moons in our solar system, the moon of Saturn that actually possesses very thick atmosphere and in some sense might be a very interesting world to explore and potentially might even have a very unusual type of life on the surface. Let's talk about this and specifically about its atmosphere and welcome to What The Math. So we've actually talked about Titan quite a lot of times before and I've even shown you the very famous video of the landing of the Huygens probe onto the surface of Titan, which I'm going to show you right now as well. And this is kind of what you see here, this is the Huygens probe landing onto Saturn, having separated from the Cassini probe. And here you can kind of see the altitude, the speed and also of course uh, the video footage that it took as it was landing on, onto the surface. And as it basically approached the surface, it started uh, transmitting quite a lot of data that eventually uh, was sent back to Earth. Now, the interesting thing about uh, this particular mission is that um, we didn't really expect to find such a thick atmosphere. And we also didn't expect to find such an unusual surface, um, specifically surface that was very Earth-like in a sense, with one little difference. And you'll see this difference in a few seconds as we basically come closer and closer to the surface. So let's accelerate this just a little bit so it's a little bit faster. Um, the surface here, even though it does look rocky, is actually basically water ice. Specifically, it's essentially very hard ice that has been here for possibly millions or even billions of years. And ice here is kind of, or acts kind of similarly to how uh, rock acts on the surface of our own planet and basically um, ice itself is essentially the hard stuff whereas the liquid stuff is actually methane and ethane and uh, in case of Titan this is actually what makes it so unusual and what creates a very unusual atmosphere here so this is kind of what the surface looks like so let's pause it right before we land right around here and you can kind of uh, see just a few uh, formations here that are basically rocky which is of course made of water ice when it landed, uh, you can kind of even see the shadow of the parachute and, of course, the actual rocks, which, once again, are made of uh, water ice. Now, just to show you a structure of this moon, this is kind of what it looks like if you were to cut it open. There is a somewhat um, rocky but also somewhat watery core containing mostly uh, ice mixed with a lot of different rocks. There is a type of water ice right here on the surface that's known as Ice 6. Then there's a um, very interesting liquid ocean followed by uh, what seems to be surface. And this surface is made up of normal ice, basically normal water ice that we have on Earth too. But because it's so cold here and because it's uh, basically really dry, this ice is super, super hard. It's probably a lot harder than the, than the ice we have on Earth. Uh, and, but there's also a lot of atmosphere, as you can see. And this is what we're going to be talking about in a little bit more detail right now. Oh, and by the way, if you were to actually extract all of the liquid from Titan, this is how big the actual bowl would be. So the ice itself is tremendously uh, large in there. And also the amount of water is way, way more than the amount of water on Earth. So Titan is basically a water moon. Now, so if I were to start entering Titan's atmosphere, which is actually a lot higher than Earth's atmosphere, uh, mostly because Titan doesn't have as much gravity, so the atmosphere kind of poofs out at a much larger distance, or in other words, it um, starts a lot earlier than the atmosphere of Earth, you would actually start experiencing a lot of interesting things. First of all, the temperature will actually start increasing quite, uh, quite a lot, uh, up to about uh, minus 100 degrees Celsius. And I guess a really good comparison of Earth and Titan atmosphere is this picture right here that you can find on Wikipedia. The initial atmosphere actually starts right here at 600 kilometers, um, and the temperature here is already at around 160 Kelvin, which is 160 degrees above um, absolute zero. And it's mostly made out of nitrogen, methane, and possibly argon, which is kind of similar to what we have on Earth, but of course Earth also has oxygen. And this, as you can see, is much, much, much higher up 
in the atmosphere than it is on Earth. Once again, because Earth's gravity is much stronger, so it actually pulls down on the atmosphere, making it uh, significantly lower in terms of uh, the actual altitude. Uh, what is interesting here is that while Earth actually has this really interesting ozone layer, which we're all familiar with, that's formed by the UV light striking oxygen in the upper atmosphere, that then becomes O3, which is ozone, and that actually protects our planet from a lot of dangerous ultraviolet radiation, Titan has something similar, but it's made from methane, and it's this thin haze layer, and we can actually even see it in Space Engine right here, this, this really interesting layer that's kind of right below the purple part, is what gives uh, Titan its unusual color, but also what creates a very unusual feature on this planet. It's kind of sort of like reverse uh, greenhouse effect. It basically cools down the planet. So this very strange layer that you can see right here actually cools down the planet by approximately uh, 10 uh, degrees Celsius. Um, then there is this other layer, which is full of different um, chemicals that create different colors. And all of this stuff actually produces a lot of really interesting materials, including this very unusual particulate rain, which basically is kind of like dust uh, rain, or basically rain containing soot and black particles, so not really liquid. Um, and uh, the temperature here actually does decrease quite a lot. And if you actually look at the graph from Wikipedia, this is what the temperature graph looks like. It, it's relatively warm in the upper atmosphere, so it's about minus 100 degrees Celsius. Then it drops quite dramatically uh, to uh, something like 70 degrees Kelvin, which is about minus 200 degrees Celsius. Uh, and then you can kind of start getting clouds here. It starts warming up again. So it, the actual temperature fluctuations in the atmosphere of Titan are very different from Earth. Don't forget that on Earth, uh, the temperature basically starts warm and then it becomes cold. It's, it's more of a straight line, uh, whereas here it's a very unusual curve. And we also get these clouds, which are methane and nitrogen clouds. We also get a lot of really interesting uh, methane rain and ethane rain, which creates lakes and rivers and a lot of really unusual activity that is kind of familiar to us, but is made up of completely different materials, which are basically uh, same materials that we often use on Earth to produce uh, fuel. So basically, if we were to go on Titan right now and collect all of this, this would be a tremendous amount of uh, gas, uh, petroleum, and of course, oil materials. But from this graph, as you can see, that at altitude of about 40 kilometers, that's actually the coldest point um, off Titan, and at altitude of about 140 kilometers, it's pretty uh, warm down up there. It's a lot warmer than it is on the surface. Um, so the surface itself is usually around 94 to 98 degrees Kelvin, sometimes warmer, sometimes colder, and um, Titan does have seasons as well, so it actually does change depending on uh, Saturn, of course. So wherever Saturn is located in regards to its orbit around the sun, uh, and there is Saturn in the back there, uh, this determines the temperature and, of course, the uh, various climatic conditions on Titan. So there is actually climates here. Uh, one day, however, lasts quite long. Uh, a single day on Titan is close to about 16 Earth days, and a single year is close to about 30 Earth years. So um, the se seasons here are much, much longer and more dramatic as well. And various uh, hemispheres and also various um, parts of Titan receive different uh, conditions based on its location around Saturn, uh, its location around the Sun, and so on and so forth. And we've established all of this by basically looking at the, the lakes on the surface of this beautiful moon, uh, which might be visible to us if we land. Let's see if we can find something. All right, so this is kind of what the surface might look like if it's a, lot, a little bit more flat, I guess. Um, and I don't know if I'll be able to find any lakes this way. Probably not, actually. But uh, the lake size basically determines uh, if there's rain going on, if there's uh, a lot of various uh, geological activity, and uh, helps us understand the climates on this moon. And what's really interesting is that based on the uh, size of these lakes, 
we can often estimate uh, the amount of rainfall. And for this reason, many scientists actually refer to Titan as a tropical moon. It's kind of crazy, but it's true because uh, even though it's really cold here, if you replace water with methane, um, it's very, very, very liquid. Uh, as a matter of fact, there's a lot of rain, there's a lot of tropical conditions because there's a lot of rainfall um, pretty much everywhere on the surface of this moon. So it's a very, very active moon. And um, because of this, many scientists started speculating that we might find certain types of life here that we don't find on our planet, methane-based life. And uh, we've even detected some unusual fluctuations of methane in the uh, upper atmosphere right here, which could not be explained in any other way. And we also detected some other molecules that are normally associated with life. So we think that maybe, just maybe, there might be somewhere in here a kind of a life, maybe, that we might be able to discover if we actually go and finally establish a colony on this cool moon. And honestly, we definitely have to because of all objects in our solar system, this is the one where it's probably going to be the easiest for us to survive, the easiest for us to produce energy and also to um, essentially produce all of the required materials for humans, including, of course, water. And most importantly, there's atmosphere. And that means that we'll be kind of protected from things like meteorites falling and destroying our colony. So all in all, Titan is definitely a really awesome object to explore. And it's definitely one of the best moons and best uh, objects for us to colonize. Other than that, that's all I wanted to mention in this video. And hopefully you learned something from it. And I'll see you guys tomorrow. Come back tomorrow to learn something else. Space out. And as always, bye bye.